Hi, I'm Todd and welcome to Ask DRTK. I hope you're having a great week. This is actually the first video in a series where I'm looking at some affordable open back headphone options. Today I have the One Audio Monitor 80, so let's check them out. Now, open back headphones are a popular choice for mixing, mastering, and of course, casual listening if you're not worried about some sound escaping into the environment around you. But one of the things I hear a lot, particularly with inexpensive open back headphones, is they lack the bass response that you can get from a closed back headphone. Now, some of you will prefer that, but especially for those that like genres like EDM and hip hop, where they want some stronger bass, that can be an issue. And I've heard of people switching from one to the other, going through many different sets of headphones until they find one that they like. So we're gonna see what these One Audio Monitor 80s are like. The One Audio headphones typically do have a fair amount of bass, but of course this is an open back, so it's gonna be a little bit different. Now looking at the logarithmic analysis from the sine sweep, we can see that the bass frequencies are actually very well represented by these headphones. Something that's really good to see in an open back. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that in the next test. The sub bass frequencies are rolled off a little bit, but not all that much. Now frequencies between about 800 Hertz and 2K are slightly underrepresented. And I do see a bit of a boost around 10K, but really nothing excessive here. And the enhanced resolution of the linear analysis really confirms what we just saw, which is that slight dip between 800 Hertz and maybe about two, 2.5 kilohertz. Again, very small in terms of actual DB. And then that little bump above 10K. So really promising here on the sign sweep. Let's uh, check out music. Now, listening back to the music recorded directly and through the headphones, I have to say I was very surprised at the accuracy of the bass response, something I do not expect to get in an inexpensive open back headphones by any means. And actually across the entire frequency range, the response here is very faithful to the original recording. So we're gonna have to really keep an eye on that. And the linear analysis would really seem to confirm what I'm hearing is that we're getting a pretty accurate representation with these headphones of the original recording. Now I've loaded up a reference of the original direct recording in audio lens from Isotope, and I'm going to play back the headphone recording so we can see the waveform versus the original reference. Watch that and also listen closely as I switch back and forth between the audio. What about the world we both believed in? What about the word that made it so? What about the world we both believed in? What about the word that made it so? You show me beauty in life You put me first all the time No wonder I'm on a high When I'm with you, when I'm with you, oh yeah 
You show me beauty in life. You put me first all the time. No wonder I'm on a high when I'm with you, when I'm with you. Oh, yeah. Now that we can see that the male vocal is actually very well represented by these headphones here on the log analysis, interestingly the female vocal has more of the lower frequencies missing, which is not something I would expect here, but again a reasonable representation. The added resolution of the linear analysis bears this out as well. We can see that the vocals are both actually quite well represented with that slight bump in the upper frequencies. And this is a sample of spoken words, so we can compare the sound of the recording directly versus the sound through the headphones. And this is a sample of spoken words, so we can compare the sound of the recording directly versus the sound through the headphones. And when I look at spoken word, I can see that slight under-representation of the 800 hertz to 2K range. I can hear it slightly when I wear the headphones as well, but it's certainly not excessive. The linear analysis bears that out as well. Now, other than comfort, I don't normally think about an open back headphone for gaming. I like to think of that closed in uh, sound, so I'm fully immersed in the game and not aware of the room that I'm in. But nonetheless, let's test it out. And listening to the game audio, I wouldn't say these would be my first choice, but that said, if gaming is one of the applications you need headphones for, these will get the job done. Some of the advantages you can often gain from an open back headphone are soundstage and imaging. And so when I did some tests with these headphones and mixing, I would say that I was able to position instruments in the mix as far as the soundstage is concerned. They certainly were average in that consideration. Now with stereo imaging, again, I would call it average. It wasn't actually as expansive as I thought it would be but still sounded very good, but certainly not to compete with higher end models. Now we'll check out the build quality in these headphones. And I have to say, first of all, they're very lightweight. The plastic is lightweight. You're gonna find things like the ear cup mounts have some flex to them. There's some flexibility, a little bit of movement there, but there's a lot of adjustment as well. So you're not gonna get as much stress on the joints as you might otherwise. So that's actually a really good thing, but everything is all plastic. The adjustments are fairly positive though. I gotta say that. The ear pads themselves are a soft velour, not as soft as a DT770 like or a Philips 9500, but still soft enough in terms of the material. A fairly firm, I would say moderately firm foam, but so there's some give, but, uh, but they, they do feel solid enough. Um, the headphone cable is detachable, which is nice to see. Just a 2.5 millimeter jack. And they have a share port on the side, which lets you connect a quarter inch jack for a second set of headphones. I don't know if you're realistically going to be doing that with a 250 ohm headphone, but nonetheless, they provide that there. The cable is a reasonable quality. It's not as soft and flexible as what you get with like an Audio-Technica, but it still feels fairly reasonable. The strain relief is decent on the end. Again, the, the cable's replaceable, so that's one thing. Now, it comes with two cables, a straight cable as well as a coil cable. Coil cable's a little on the short side, a little bit stiff. Not too bad, though. I think over time it'll be okay. And these headphones also come with a hard case, and it's... You know, it's nothing to write home about. It's not that exciting, but it has a pouch for the extra cable to store in there and it will protect the headphones. Not particularly small or portable though. So that's something to think about. Now I'll draw your attention to a couple of things with the features and specs on these headphones. They're a 250 ohm headphone with a sensitivity of 100 dB. So they're actually not too bad. You can drive them from most audio interfaces without problems. I wouldn't recommend them necessarily for a phone or a tablet. You're going to struggle a little bit for volume there. Now, of course, a headphone amplifier is always going to give you that added headroom and versatility, so something to think about. Now, the headphones are rated at 10 to 40,000 hertz. Now, we certainly saw some drop off even outside the 20 to 20,000 hertz range, so you need to know that, but nonetheless, there is some extension available with the headphones. One other thing I want to point out is the cables are a little bit unique with these headphones in that we have the 2.5 millimeter jack, of course, connecting to the headphones, but the input is a 3.5 millimeter on the straight cable whereas the coil cable goes directly to a quarter inch jack. There's no adapter with these headphones. So depending on which cable you choose, it's gonna affect whether or not you need an adapter for your headphone amplifier, interface, or other device. So now that we've ran all these tests on these headphones, I'll give you my final thoughts. Now I have to say at the time of recording, these headphones were available for $89.99, $90 US funds. So very affordable as far as an open back headphone goes. And given that price point, I have to say they really overperformed my expectations. 
The quality of the audio was far better than what I expected and was very accurate when I consider them for a mixing or mastering application. So you could actually use them for that and achieve some great results. Now they certainly didn't match up to the soundstage and imaging possibilities of some of my higher end headphones like my Sennheiser HD 600s, but again, there's a big difference in price there. So overall, I'm gonna say they perform very, very well. The build quality, again, very average. I wouldn't say these are gonna take a lot of banging around in the studio. You don't wanna be you know, rolling over these with chairs or anything like that, but they have a lot of adjustability, which takes some of the strain off the joints in that. So, you know, in general use, they could hold up pretty well. And so I would say if you're looking for an open back headphone with great bass response, it's affordable, these could be a really good option. It's very rare that I come across an affordable open back that has good bass response and reasonable frequency response as well. Now I'll be looking at some other headphones in this series so you can see whether one is better for you than the other. But overall, these are gonna be a pretty good recommendation if you're looking for an affordable option and an open back. And depending when you're watching this video, another from the series may appear on the screen now. Otherwise, there's gonna be more options for good headphones. As always, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you joining me and I hope you have a great week.